You are welcome to Claribel Health Hub. The month of October has been known as a month where there is a lot of awareness being created on breast cancer. Why? Because it's a condition that we don't know much about. Fortunately, in the recent past, it has been a yearly awareness creation in October and it comes with the color of pink. Most ladies on Fridays will love to go out in pink. And for some of us, every day October is a pink month. Therefore, today, stick and stay right here on Claribel Health Hub. We have news for you. And we pray you join us together to create more awareness so that nobody is taken unawares. You are welcome. What is breast cancer? Breast cancer is the abnormal growth of breast tissue. And then this kind of growth is that the breast grows and most body cells as we know, some die and they grow back, some die and they grow. However, when it comes to breast cancer, these are cells that are growing and nature cannot control it. Unfortunately, it does not only affect women, but men too. It is one of the leading causes of death amongst women and it's one of the leading causes in cancer cases. Therefore, it's our responsibility, you and I, to ensure that we all become aware of what breast cancer is and for us to be able to acknowledge it when it comes around. I know nobody wants this kind of announcement or this kind of diagnosis or this kind of news. It's not interesting, it's not. But knowledge is power. Let's equip ourselves so that we'll be able to reduce our risks. Why? Because breast cancer does not have an exact cause. Unlike malaria, you can talk about malaria parasite. If it's COVID-19, we know it's the COVID virus. Unfortunately, breast cancer is not. But then, a number of factors, we call them risk factors. The more you have, there is a chance that you could come down with breast cancer. Fortunately or unfortunately, no healthcare worker, not even a doctor, can predict any individual who can have breast cancer unless you have been diagnosed before. Even that, there is a chance and a higher chance that all things being equal, being on care, there is a lower risk for you to come up with breast cancer. Unfortunately, most people only acknowledges breast cancer diagnosis in the latter stages and many people only report in the later years of the condition. This is an agent time where there have been a lot of education and management when it comes to breast cancer. Therefore, we need to work together to reduce the mortalities we get from breast cancer. Why? Because early identification, diagnosis and treatment gives better prognosis and a higher chance of survival. Like I mentioned earlier, looking at risk factors, who is at risk of developing breast cancer? Commonly, we'll talk about being a woman. But before I go into that, there are three major factors. That is lifestyle, environmental factors, and then genetic or inborn factors. When it comes to nature, once you are born a female, yes, you stand a chance of getting breast cancer. Why? Because we have the breast. We are the women, we have the breast. I know some have bigger breasts than others. It is said that women who have bigger breasts with much dense or much tissue have a higher chance. Also, Women beyond the age of 50 stand a chance. Unfortunately for men, beyond 60, there is some kind of a risk. Also, if you have some relatives, I mean blood related, who have come down with breast cancer or who currently have breast cancer, it, there is a chance that you will come down with breast cancer. Some other factors 
when it comes to lifestyle is our type of food we eat, whether we do exercises or we are active during the day. And then if you are a night worker, unfortunately, science has proven that during the day, the daylight helps the body produces some anti-cancer hormones, which help reduces your chances of getting a cancer. Unfortunately, during night, we don't have these anti-cancer hormones being produced much. Why? Because we don't get a lot of natural light. It's all, most of the time, artificial lighting. The other thing that I also want to talk about when it comes to lifestyle will be as some individuals smoke. Some take a lot of alcohol. And it has been a regular thing. Women who are in the menopause. Some studies are also proving that ladies who started menstruation before the age of 12, that is what we call early menarche, and women who have late menopause, that is after age 52, there is a higher chance of coming down. If you are a woman who has never been pregnant before, a woman who has not breastfed, there is a higher chance. I know somebody is laughing because they go by breastfeed, breastfeed, breastfeed. When we talk about breastfeeding reducing the chance, we will go further into it when we are discussing prevention. With the causes, it is said that some use of hormones, or let me say hormonal replacement therapies and contraceptives, can also predispose some individuals. The other thing I don't want to forget, so I'm really, I'm really reviewing from my notes so that I don't miss anything out. I want to give everything. The other thing we need to look at, diseases of the breast. Ladies, let me caution all of us that it's not every growth that we find in the breast around the breast, that is a cancer. Cancer can only be diagnosed by some investigations in a healthcare care center, like in a hospital. One cannot just look at it and come to a conclusion that this is a cancer. Therefore, it's very important that we report early. How can I know some of these changes? There are a lot of changes that takes place in the breast, even per woman cycle. During menstruation, the breast is usually loose. After menstruation, around ovulation, it gets a bit tighter and heavy. Towards menstruation, it becomes a little bit engorged and a bit heavier. At menstruation, everything comes off again. And it's a cycle that goes on. When you are pregnant, the breast goes through some changes as well. When you have delivered and breastfeeding, the breast will go through another kind of changes. This kind of changes tells us that there is some kind of interaction between various hormones, so it's not a particular hormone which is persisting in a woman's body. That is why when you are not breastfeeding or you have never breastfed, there is a chance of you getting breast cancer because the major hormone that will be working will be progesterone and estrogen. But when there is pregnancy, we get more of progesterone and then estrogen will go down. During breastfeeding, we have more of prolactin, which is working now, and the others being a bit lower. Therefore, there is some interruption. So women who have never breastfed or have not been pregnant don't have these kind of interactions between the hormones. That is why some of us women will come down with breast cancer. What about men? Interestingly, the natural occurring hormones within us predisposes us to these kind of conditions. Hormonal replacement therapies for some specific kind of conditions or diseases also predisposes us. So it's very important that if you're on any hormonal replacement treatment, I hope you are being 
cared for and monitored by a healthcare provider who understands and know what the treatment is about. Prevention, very important. The first step is to know your breast. How well do you know your breast? Interestingly, the breast cancer cells, as we're talking about, does not only occur in the breast. It could happen around the chest, I mean the upper part of our chest, and it can go way back into our armpit. Why? Because the breast cells and breast tissue is around our chest, and the tails of the breast goes as far as into our armpit. So it's very important for us to get to know this. And when we are looking out, you will look at these places really well. A breast cancer group in the UK has come up with the term TLC as a form to remind us to take care of our breast. T standing for touch, L standing for look, C standing for care. Touch, touch your breast. That is one of the means by which you will get to know your breast better. And when you're touching it, you're going all around it. As I said earlier, go into your chest, the upper part, and come down into the chest corners and down into the rib side, all the way into your armpits and way down there. Any strange thing you find, don't forget my beautiful lady, my handsome gentleman, don't stay at home. Report to the nearest healthcare facility so you'll be given the needed attention. Remember, you are not just taking care of one breast, but the other as well. So I did to the left earlier. So the right hand will examine the, right, the left breast. The left hand will examine the right breast. Then we talk about looking at your breast. Look at your breast. It's very important. Probably after a shower, come into your room in your birthday suit. I mean, when everything is off and just you and your mirror, let your mirror communicate to you. Usually, most of us, the breast, one is a bit lower than the other. One is slightly heavier than the other. It's not so obvious. But when this kind of largeness and shift, it's so obvious. My dear brother, my dear sister, don't stay at home. Report to the nearest facility. Look at the color of the breast. Usually, the inner part, which we call the nipple, is much darker than the outer part. And that's where you usually see that kind of color difference. Else, all the skin after the nipple have the same color. At the nipple, they also have the same color. Let's note this so that the necessary change will be immediately effected. Also, the shape of the breast. When you see anything like a swelling or the skin has become like a peel of an orange or a grapefruit, please immediately report to the nearest facility. Some of us have heard time and again that we need to do mammogram. Yes, mammogram is the only test that is able to tell us the density of a breast. So I usually say women who have bigger breasts should do well and get a mammogram. From then, you can talk to your gynecologist or your reproductive health care provider for various observations. From there, they will give you how it will be, whether you need to do mammogram every year, every two years, probably every three to five years. It's important. How do I examine my breast? How often can I do it? You can examine your breast as often as you want to. And then it's much easier for the ladies. Just a day after your menstruation, let's say you menstruated for five days, you know, usually know your cycle and how long the menstruation, I mean the period that you flow lasts for. It's usually between three to five days, maximum seven for some people. So after the seventh day, which is the eighth day, do well during your bath when you have just water yourself. Go all over your breast and examine it. Examine both breasts. Paying attention to the 
armpit part of the breast all the way down coming up into the chest all the way around the breast because mine is quite handy so it's easy for me to get all around it within a twinkle of an eye for some of us we really have much denser breasts and we need to take our time to examine it completely make sure you have done it when you are not sure it's a month of october go to any nearest healthcare facility or a reproductive center tell them you want to have a breast screening and i believe they'll help you do their breast examination you can equally examine your breast whilst lying down or while standing up but do well to go empty on your chest so you can really see use a mirror to acknowledge the changes if any in the color in the shape and in the texture of the breast today this is where we're going to end we are ready to answer all of your questions we'll be glad to have your comments don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video with others i believe it will be a great blessing to us all a year by now we will all be here breast cancer free celebrating still in our pink happy breast cancer month see you next year